The title of this video might have you wondering what we're talking about. After all, you see Flash all the time, in literally every single game. So what do we mean that it's not meta? There's an important distinction that we want to make here. Flash used to be basically compulsory. You just had to take Flash. There wasn't another viable option. Every champ in every role would take it, and that was the end of it. It was so unquestionable that you take Flash every game that there have been debates for a decade now on which key should be used for it. I mean, of course F stands for Flash, but basically there just wasn't a ton of variety or options when it came to summoners. Some notable exceptions like Shaco Jungle will run Ignite, but in the same way that Ignite on Shaco is pretty much mandatory for him, there's just not much variety when it comes to summoners for a lot of champions. People have sort of agreed that there is just a best in slot option, and that's usually Flash. We can see how this was not too dissimilar to how Heal was treated as well for ADCs. It used to be the de facto best summoner spell in bot lane, and it received several nerfs over the years before we saw things like Teleport, Cleanse, Barrier, and Exhaust crop up more frequently. However, in this case, these other summoner spells were taken alongside Flash. It was unthinkable that someone might not run it. Not using it was actually one of the easiest ways to tell that someone was trolling, and Disco Nunu is part of league culture that will probably never go away. I mean, just listen to this reaction from Sneaky and Doublelift when Ghost and Cleanse get picked in a pro game. Wait, what the f Am I Luger seeing no those flash. fucking summoners on Luger, Luger bro? Has no what am I seeing? He's actually running it down. For some reason, Flash on the champions that it's good for has just been treated like it shouldn't ever be swapped out. But that's why I'm here to make my case that you really should be thinking about doing just that way more often. In high elo, it's just now starting to catch on, but in low elo, you rarely ever see other summoners. Today, we're talking about why Flash isn't the meta anymore, and why you shouldn't be scared to be Flashless. And you know what else you shouldn't be scared of? Joining our hyper-improvement platform at skillcap.com. That's because it's completely risk-free as you're kept safe with rank-up insurance. If you don't significantly improve while actively using Skillcapped, then you get your money back. No questions asked. Come check us out with the link in the description below, and get the rank you've always wanted. All right, now let's get into today's guide. To first understand why we might not need Flash, we need to understand why Flash is so good. And I think we can chalk this up to a few different points. One, Flash lets you immediately reposition in an instantaneous way. And two, Flash interacts with abilities in a way that doesn't exist without it. Let's break down these points further one by one. The first part of point one, the instantaneous part. Instantaneous abilities are very rare in League of Legends. The fact that Flash is one of them makes it unique and it does something that no other ability can replicate. Even champions that have the most comparable ability to a Flash, Ezreal's Arcane Shift and Kasten's Riftwalk, don't have instantaneous blinks. This is because most abilities in League have what's called a cast time, where upon pushing your button for that spell, your champion will stop moving and cast the ability before it goes off and control is once again returned to the player. These cast times commonly last 0, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, or 1 second, Ezreal's and Kasten's both being 0.25 seconds. Other instantaneous abilities exist in the form of certain spells that, with cast time, would feel incredibly awkward. Syndra's Q has no cast time, but as a result does have time before it actually deals damage. Spells just don't really exist in a truly instant way. Of course, some other champions do not have cast time on their dashes, but rather travel times instead or other restrictions. Graves Dash, Kha'Zix Leap, Shun Taunt, Jax Q, etc. These movement spells have this limitation. Even Echo or Zed, whose second half of their dashes are instantaneous, are gated by the first half in fact having a travel time. There's a reason why these cast times are the duration that they are, and that's counterplay. The median human reaction time is 0.273 seconds. On average, most people are going to be able to see the start of even the fastest ability and have some chance of reacting to it. Of course, if you try to react to an ability with a 0.25 second cast time or quick travel time with your own ability that also has a 0.25 second cast time, you're not going to be able to react unless you have something that acts instantaneously. And that's where Flash is insanely valuable. If an entire enemy team comp is full of things that you need to react quickly to, like a Malphite ult, Blitzcrank hook, or a Grag Assault, Flash definitely provides a ton of value, where a normal dash might just get caught anyways either due to cast time, travel time, or a lack of distance creation. In this game, I purposely didn't take Flash into a Malphite just to see how playable it would be, and well, it wasn't. 
even though I was super fed. But in the case that none of these things are present, Flash isn't necessarily doing that much, at least not because of its instantaneous value. The second portion of this point has to do with repositioning and terrain scaling, and some champs are just better at that than others. The stereotypical dashless ADC isn't moving around nearly as much as a Riven, Kindred, or Gwen with spammable dashes would. To bring up counterplay again, something like a Vagar Cage can lock down those champions with tons of dashes and make them feel like they're just as immobile as an Ash. You can go over or get out of terrain in many different ways. Jarvan Ult and Vagar Cage both create terrain, but act very differently. A blink versus a dash in these situations is an important distinction. Blinks will get out of the cage, dashes will not. On top of this, some dashes specifically have to be able to go over terrain to get out of a Jarvan Ult. Some dashes just don't go over walls. If you can already get out of something like a Vagar Cage or a Jarvan Ult, you might not necessarily need Flash because you already have counterplay. But if you don't, you're probably going to want it somehow, aka take Flash. The difference of going from 0 to 1 movement spell or going from 3 to 4 is really drastic, and the more movement options you have, the less Flash actually matters. Other effects like grounding from Singe W or Cassio W can make Flash lose value as it just can't be activated, and that is something to consider as well, but let's go on to our next point. Flash has a lot of cool interactions. The nature of being able to instantaneously reposition means that some abilities get a lot better. Flash buffering is a huge one. Something like Annie Ultimate works by placing your cursor on a location, and if Annie is not in range, she will walk to get into range before actually casting. However, if you flash instead of allowing her time to walk, the ult will be cast immediately as the flash happens. It's a common misnomer that we say flash ult when really what happens here is that Annie presses ult first and then flashes to get into range. And this achieves the desired interaction. Any ability that can be cast outside of range can work like this, which includes Lux E, Vel'Koz E, and more. Even abilities that don't work like this have some other interactions as well. In the time that it takes you to travel during a spell cast where you're aiming might need to change, and Flash can add a lot of versatility. Gragas E can be instantly repositioned after casting, and that is probably the first thing I think of when it comes to cool interactions. Vi-Q and Shentaunt also has a similar effect when using Flash, and other abilities like Ezreal R and Cassio R can be redirected or made to look like they're coming from the place that they're casted, while not actually being the case. This works due to cast times, where your location can change during the cast of an ability, but usually only through the use of Flash. And something like Draven R can also redirect in a way that he normally cannot do without. The most famous example of this is definitely the Lee Sin Ultimate, commonly dubbed the Insect where during the cast time of your ult, you can flash to change the direction of it. Lee Sin R actually can both be flash buffered by flashing into range and also flash redirected, which makes the summoner incredibly versatile for him in particular. Even weirder, some abilities that are uncancelable like Nocturne R can be flashed out of when normally the ability is unstoppable by any other means, including interference from your opponents. But honestly, this one isn't really that important. So how important Flash is to your champion really depends on how useful the specific interactions really are. Of course, for champions that have massive use out of Flash, it's probably a no-brainer to have it. But let's talk about the champions that don't really get the luxury of using this super well. Scion Q has a long cast time to get the desirable effect of a knockup, and you can't cast Flash in the middle of it to reposition it. On top of this, you can't flash while his R is active, and that needs to channel for a certain duration in order to increase the damage and CC duration. Because of this, Scion can't really use flash offensively super well when it comes to surprising your opponent with instant reach. All of his abilities have a long startup and generally just don't interact well with the ability. For a lot of champions without these interesting options, we do see some adoption of Ghost. Kasante, Gwen, and Scion among a decently large player base, but other champions benefit from the same idea in a similar way. And Ghost really isn't taken commonly on more out-of-the-box picks except amongst challenger players. In this challenger game, both junglers have Ghost, and one of the top laners as well. Kha'Zix is not something that is commonly seen running Ghost in lower elos, but is really starting to be taken the majority of the time and overall seen as the better summoner by some high elo and pro players. Especially so in this game, Ghost is good for Kha'Zix. Flash will always provide defensive and offensive benefits, but that doesn't mean that other summoners don't do that as well, sometimes even better than Flash. Flash does create distance and allows you to escape situations you normally wouldn't be able to. 
but in the case of a long distance, Flash definitely doesn't win at doing this when compared to Ghost. Over the course of Ghost's 10 second duration, just look at how much better it is at actually getting distance. If I want to get somewhere faster, Ghost is a better summoner than Flash, unless Flash would be able to cut out a wall that you couldn't normally scale. Sometimes you don't want one relatively large burst of movement, but instead smaller bursts of movement that you can control over a period of time. If you want to kite kind a of champion like Gwen, Singed, or in this case Udyr, who mostly just runs at you pretty quickly, Flash doesn't actually get you out of range, as they can still catch you given time. Even if you flash out, you can't turn back in to try and do damage back. The second you get back into auto attack range or spellcasting range, the gap can be closed again. Ghost can help you maintain the same distance the entire time, instead of giving you a dash which is sometimes just strictly going to be worse like in these kinds of scenarios. In the case that you are a more immobile champ dealing with someone who has a lot of dashes, Ghost can also allow you to actually catch up to someone where Flash fails. Chasing the Kassadin in this game with Ghost is much easier than using Flash to chase him, for example. This is just a perfect showcase of someone who is looking at the individual game and selecting the best summoner for the situation. He doesn't pick Ghost on Kha'Zix every single game, but for games where it outclasses Flash, he has it. Kha'Zix Graves, Kindred, Wukong, Karthus, and Trundle are all some jungle champions that don't have important interactions with Flash. And given that Smite is absolutely mandatory to take in jungle, you can't exactly opt to run both Ghost and Flash like top laners and ADCs have done in the past. However, I've seen Ghost, Ignite, and Exhaust all be used on these champions to adapt for the situation, which goes to show how sometimes another summoner can definitely be considered. And I do think that alternative summoners are overall stronger for a lot of picks like these given specific comps. In this specific example, Flash would maybe have allowed a similar thing that Ghost allowed me to do, which was not getting hit by Zack's ult, and to continue kiting. But there are a couple of other advantages that Ghost have over Flash that make it something to be considered in a lot of games. The cooldown of Ghost versus Flash is a 90 second difference. For a lot of junglers, it can be pretty common to go into a lane, use your flash to blow the laner's flash, and then come back later to punish it. But you also don't have your flash back before theirs. They come back at the same time. This isn't true of Ghost. If you ghost into a lane and get someone's flash, you will have a 90 second window where your ghost is up and their flash isn't. This imbalance of resources and frequency of use can be extremely strong, and allow you to punish someone who has the quote, best summoner in the game, where you wouldn't be able to with a flash of your own. On top of this, we should definitely bring up the idea of difficulty of execution. We have all made terrible flashes that just didn't do what we wanted them to do. Whether it was just flashing into a wall instead of over it, or putting your cursor in the wrong direction and going in the wrong direction, or maybe you just hit the button accidentally at the wrong time and it messed up a combo. Flash is hard to use. Other summoners, not so much. We can use Ghost as the main example, and you can accidentally hit it at any point and the worst thing that can happen is it goes on cooldown. You can't actively make a play worse by pressing Ghost, where for Flash that is not true. In terms of execution and mental burden, Ghost is much easier to use than Flash just because you don't need to target it, but also because it doesn't have to be used at the exact right time. It lasts for 10 seconds, which is an incredibly long time, and a lot of players don't know that it also extends in duration when you get a kill. Essentially, it can provide you value over the course of an entire fight without you having to think about it, while Flash is very much an option you have to constantly worry about. And even then, maybe you just wouldn't react in time to dodge the Malphite anyways. You just have way more room for error with other summoners, and League is often all about consistency, and getting value out of your play. If you don't place a flash perfectly and time it correctly, it often provides little to no value. Just some food for thought. In general, consider taking other summoners over flash more often. If you don't have a specific interaction that you're looking for with your champion or a specific enemy champion's ability that you need to play around, you might find yourself getting more value out of another summoner in a situation where you never would have thought to switch off of flash before this. Hopefully we got your brain thinking, and we'll see if more people can adopt the use of other summoners to truly optimize their game.
And if you want to optimize your improvement at League of Legends, there's nothing better than our brand new Master in Minutes product on our website, skillcap.com. We take the highest priority skills you need to learn to climb ranks fast, such as wave control, and then break it down into a step-by-step -step process of bite-sized one to two minute videos that are easy to understand. So while you wait for your next game to start, you can learn freezing, fast pushing, slow pushing, bouncing waves, the list goes on, all in just a few minutes to maximize your improvement rate. We're adding new courses every week. For example, this week we added one on mid lane macro. These courses have been getting five star ratings from all of our users, raving at how helpful they are. Seems too good to be true? Well, don't worry. We're backed by a rank up guarantee. If you don't significantly improve while actively using skill capped, then you get your money back, no questions asked. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description below and get the rank you've always wanted. We here at Skillcapped want to thank you for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.